is rare air, isn't it? We're on a mission. We want to win a premiership. We knew it was going to be a pretty tough road to get back ourselves into a grand final. Hawthorne have experienced Warriors and we've got to match that. The best team all year. This is its masterpiece. Back on top of the mountain. Proud and a resilient group and they responded in the right manner over the last two weeks and give ourselves a, uh, another chance at a, a grand final victory this week. Four consecutive grand finals. Still got to come through Chicago. Got to go through Chicago, Jared. It was the old uh, Michael Jordan saying, you had to beat them at their home dunghill. And that's exactly the case right here today, isn't it? Well, it's one of the great inequities of the competition, but I think we all embrace it that... Uh... The West Coast Eagles, despite finishing higher than the Hawks, have to play the grand final at their home ground. But uh, it's going to be ever so, you so you've got to deal with it. You do. Let's have a look at the Hawks' record here because they've been simply amazing at the MCG over the last few seasons. And it surprised me a little bit. They're 52 get times they've played here, 41 wins, 11 losses, Jared, as since 2012, as yep. you said. But have a look at the finals record. That's where it really drives home their dominance at the MCG. Yeah, they're absolute experts. Uh, nine wins from 10 matches. They've had that one loss, of course, uh, against the Sydney Swans a couple of years ago. They know how to play this game. They've got a very experienced side, and they'll come here. Really buoyant with a lot of confidence. A lot of people talk about how they use the ball, their system. Yep. Alistair Clarkson's working out the way down the ground, their defensive structures, all these sorts of things. But in the end, it's their ability to pressure, Jared. Their harassment is the best in the competition. It has been for some time. Let's have a look at their, their pressure indicators and what they're able to do. That's the, the last time they lost a pressure differential in a final. 2012 uh, grand final here. And I think they learned some lessons that day and maybe sharpened the focus in the, that area. Because look at that record since. They've been unbeaten in the differential on pressure. And I think that's why the next 30 minutes of football is just going to be so fascinating. Everybody knew what uh, they did to S Sydney last year in that first 30 minutes. game was over, let's be honest. Yeah. And I think the West Coast Eagles will know. Simo knows. It's all about the contest today. They know that they're coming here and uh, Hawthorne know how to play this game as well as anybody. But don't forget, Eagles have got a 100% record at this ground <laughs> this year, King. <laughs> Let me give you that one back. Only played here once. And Small sample. Five times in three years, Jerry. I'd like the Hawks, Hawks record, Tandy, going to this one. Good on you boys, thank you for that. Speaking of the Hawks record, we have one of their stars jo joining us on the panel. I speak of Dermot Brereton, a five-time day premiership player and a five-time night premiership champion. Dermot, as I welcome you, uh, 83 to 89 yes. uh, was a stellar period for Hawthorne. Should this team win this afternoon, could they be compared favourably with the team from 83 to 89? Absolutely. No doubt whatsoever. To win three games, what was it happened three times previously in 120 years of football? It's a phenomenal uh, effort, and to have the event out here today that they're going three times to the big dance and maybe take it home, it's just incredible. How do you feel? We've chatted to Jason about it, and he's obviously nervous. Uh, about he's nervous he's going to lose the record. No. Well, we love the Hawks, we hope they get it in. <laughs> oh, these types of days I used to turn up and think, oh, how many do I have to feed to Dunstall today? But uh, oh. <laughs> didn't take long. He's been on set 30 <laughs> seconds. You can't pass it when you haven't got it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, they're, they're wonderful days. Uh, people say, look, we, all the same things happen in a grand final. We go out there, we play the same way, we use all the same attributes that have contributed to us getting to this stage of the season but it's not another game no. everything, your, your reputation your legacy as a footballer is made, won, earned and even lost on this day so every moment is vital to the way you'll be viewed in the pages of history. Well I wonder how Adam Simpson is feeling at this very minute, let's find out he's with our own Brad Johnson well, Simo, it's, a, it's an exciting day for the football club. How are you feeling? How are the players feeling? Uh, I'm not quite sure. I think they're a bit so, but they're trying to hide it. You know, the old casual, uh, you know, nothing phases them. And I can see through a few of them, though. Things are just starting to swirl up in here a little yeah. bit. It's probably picked up in the last half an hour. Yeah, it's a hot day and it's a northerly and it's going to be swirly. But I think the lower kicks over 20 or 30 metres will be all right. Main focus areas for, for your boys today. Do you look back at that qualifying final, execute the same way? Have you tried to tinker with things a little bit? No, look, really going into that game, we, we wanted just to play our way. And um, that'll be the same today, mate. And they're going to do what they do. We're going to do what we do. And 
I suppose whoever blinks first, or if the scoreboard tells you got to change, then, then then you'll see some changes. The boys actually look pretty relaxed, warming up, uh, warming up behind us. A bit of music going on. The few just uh, got a nice little strut around, which which is good. It's a healthy confidence the group has got, though. They've got healthy confidence, which I think you need. I just you just don't know if it's um, if it's real or not. So until we get to quarter time, I, I think that's when you really know. Talk all week. What are you going to do with Sam Mitchell? Not long to go to the game. Surely you can give us the heads up now what you're going to no. do. <laughs> no, well, I think I think we'll just have to have a look at it. Um, we've got some things in place. We haven't done it all year, um, but we've definitely put some work into having to do it. Well, Simo, you've had a great year as a coach, as a club, as a whole. The, the players are in fine form. Thanks again, and thanks for your time throughout the year as well. Good luck. Thanks, great. Tough. Cheers. Well yeah, great to hear from Adam Simpson. Dermot, in particular, what do you expect them to do about um, Sam Mitchell? There's been so much talk that Mitchell is the key man as far as Hawthorne is concerned. I think Mitchell's been the main player of the final series. He controls the fortunes of Hawthorne around the middle of the ground. You're almost obligated, though, as the West Coast Eagles. Prittis is their opposite number. Yep. And they're almost obligated to go with what's got them there. And that's Prittis, who's mm. just as equally good at finding the ball, at winning the ball, at the stoppage, at the contest, and inside the hard pack. So is he as good with his hand, hands and feet as Mitchell? Probably the next half level back, but he just might get it a little bit more than Mitchell. So I think they run him head to head. Let's have a look what's coming up on Summer of Fox because uh, it doesn't stop after today. October is the best of 2015. November is our history month. December, the superstar month. And January, it's guest programmer of the month. So a lot more still to come right here on Fox Footy. You're watching Grand Final Day on Fox. Pre-game. Brought to you by Mazda BT50. He's a freak talent, this guy. And he's prime, Jared. 26 years of age, over 150 games now. And more importantly, for the first time, yep. he's played a full season of football. Kingy, there isn't one person in that 100,000 crowd out there, including West Coast Eagles supporters, that isn't hoping for a little bit of Cyril magic today. And it's not just ball in hand, Jared. The one thing that's often missed with this guy is his creativity. Mm. Knock-ons. Number one player in the competition in the last five years at putting his teammates into space and not obtaining possession. But when he does it, they lead the scores. Everything he does goes on the scoreboard. It's about impact. One in every four is the AFL average. One in every two for this man. He is a creative genius whether he's got the ball in his hand or even if it's just a deft tap. You can't teach this. This is natural skill. Clarko obviously coaches momentum. Get the ball going our way but he also teaches get the ball on the outside of the crush. You don't have to take possession and handball. You've got the gift. You don't have to be a ruckman. You just have to have raw ability and he's got soft hands Cyril and they create goals. Have a look at this one here Jerry because this is almost a volley. The first one most players would go for. He yes. tried to obtain possession. But just now, he assesses that Hartung's in the space on the outside. If he takes possession, Douglas gets him. It's so creative. They get the pure clearance from there. This is why the challenge for Clarkson is to use him in the forward line, to use him at centre bounces, because he can do it all. I think his great danger is inside the forward 50. You saw there Billy Hartung wasn't even ready for it. And this is the genius of Cyril Rioli. He thinks seconds ahead of some of his even great teammates. Low possessions, maximum damage. That's all he's about, and that's why he's so dangerous close to goal, as you said. Top five in the competition for forward 50 tackles. Everything he does goes on the scoreboard. Number three in the competition again this year, and that is why he is All-Australian in 2015. That's when he's got the ball in his hand. That is when he's got Perceived the ball. Perceived pressure also creates uh, goals for the Hawks. Need to settle you down, because we had Dermot Brereton <laughs> who caught up with him during the week, and let's have a listen to what he had to say. ticket price alone to see that man do what he does. Now, I don't know if you've noticed, but I, I have an appreciation of the way you play, Cyril. Have you noticed that? Does that come through at any stage? Um, yeah, yeah, it has. It's crossed my mind. <laughs> You're right up there with Johnny Platten. And the way you play, what goes through your head? Do you actually pre-plan to side someone, or does it happen fluid? Is it instinctive? Uh, it's just instinctive, I think. You know, just growing up, that's... That's how I've always played on the growing up on the TV Islands. That's that's how they all play over there. So um, I don't try and change my game style. It's just you know coming to the Hawks, um, just trying to do the team things and um, especially in the forward line, just doing you know what I can to, to help the forwards you know kick kick some goals. Bangs it, rolls it. Oh, probably. 
really ices it, to be honest. Do I reckon it was two years before you said anything but, yeah, bro, when you came down here, when did you start to open up? Oh, man, that's, 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 that's true. I, um, you know, pretty quiet bloke. Um, and, yeah, still to this day, I don't really say much. I'm pretty, uh, pretty quiet and just sort of stick to myself. But, um, yeah, I didn't see the physio room for the first year. I think I never went in there. Um, but, yeah, come out of my shell a bit and, um, you know, I've played a lot of footy with um, a lot of the guys here. So, um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of friendship, good friendships have been built over the years. At the end of the year, will you go back up north and have a holiday up there? Do you go out to the uh, out to the uh, country again? Yeah, I definitely um, you know spend a few weeks up there and, and try to try to see everyone. It's always good going back home to you know mentally um, freshen my mind and just get back to get back to you know the place that I love and that's just back up north and just being out on the boat and fishing and, and shooting and all that. It's uh, it's definitely something that I enjoy doing. What would you prefer to play? More in the midfield, more in the forward line, the mixture. What, what's your favourite? Um, I, I definitely enjoy the forward line. Um, you know, kicking goals and, um, you know, tackle pressure and all that. Sheridan. Oh, Sheridan! Rioli, it looks good off the boot. The bounce, it's a goal. You've had a great season and your body's held up. What do you put that to? Myself and the medical staff um, set out a plan during the preseason, and we, we stuck to that very well. Uh, working on a lot of a lot of hill hill sprints and hill runs, and you know working pretty hard in the gym. So I think for me, all the little things count. You know, doing Pilates, um, you know, getting physio done on the days off. I think that's definitely helped me um, throughout the year, and um, you know, just happy to be out there. You know, this year uh, playing finals. You know, last year was pretty tough sitting out and. And coming in and playing the grand final, but um, just to be out there week to week with the boys has, has been awesome. Rioli at the back, he'll take it, are you? Rioli can do it, he can do anything, the little champ. I think just being a lot happier, you know, when you've got good vibes through your body, you, you know, it's less stress, you, you... You sound very spiritual, a good vibe through your body. Yeah, oh, definitely. You know, I think, you know, you surround yourself with good people, um, you know, that, that definitely helps you. Well, Cyril, I hope we see some magic on the weekend, mate. Good luck. Thanks, Danny. Cheers. <laughs> yes, he's one of those players that you would just pay to go and see him alone because he is quite the magician. But it leaves Dermot with a major problem because he is very fond of him and he is voting on the Norm Smith medal. <laughs> it's going to make it tough, Derm. Have you well, put your votes in already, Derm? Well, I started <laughs> off by saying if he just gets 14 touches, I'll give him three. I've got it down to five at the moment, so I'm almost thinking if he can just touch it three times, one a vote, he could get three votes with that, Jason. And then why is everyone running for their phones and jumping on? He's going to make an awful quandary for me if he actually does play well. How do I give him a vote after having fun during the week talking about it? Well, he's a fantastic player. Derm, I'll stay with you. Your grand final moment. What's your most memorable? Well, look, I, I love the blokes like Cyril who just do that and make that wizardry. But equally as so, I love hard moments. It's the grind moments. And the favourite bit for me was in the 1988 grand final. It was a slog. And I will show you this caption of play here. And Hawthorne moved the ball. And, yeah, well, so in 88, it was just absolute power and pressure we put on the opposition. And a little bit of skill there too, oh, Sandy. Oh, you squeezed yourself in. How did that come in out of these talking, talking about, about pressure? <laughs> watch this. Just watch this. Bang. There's no yeah. stats here. It's just all pressure on the opposition to win the footy back and even, right. and even though we're in a different era now and different league it's it's still the same as in attack at the opposition yeah. pressure to the opposition body so that day i just so that was my favorite moments was some of the captions in there one of them was when we moved the ball from the halfback line to the half forward line as he took a shot at goal he kicked the point but it actually went from the back of the square to the forward of the square, there wasn't a stat. There was yeah. no handball, no mark. It was tackle, the ball spill forward, it's body Push. pressure, the ball forward. It was phenomenal work rate. And that was a big win for you guys. At what stage did you know you had that game won? Oh, after the toss. Yeah. <laughs> There's the arrogance <laughs> of the Hawksman <laughs> that we that, like. <laughs> I think on that note, we better go inside to the MCG. John Owen Moons, take it over. 
Thanks, Sandy. Moons, the conditions in the ground look, it's a magic day, but it really is starting to swirl around. The last half an hour, it's really picked up. It's going to make it tricky, especially when uh, moving that ball forward and more importantly, converting the opportunities that come your way today for golf. Uh, look, you're spot on. Look, the sun is out. It is spectacularly hot. It really is, especially sitting here in this seat, Jonah. But you're right, the wind has picked up and it does get very swirly in the MCG. It's not like it goes to one end or the other. It just swirls in here. We're seeing lots of wrappers and rubbish floating around on the MCG as we speak. So that is going to make it extremely hard once you do get anywhere outside of 30 to try and kick for these goals. So it has to be so important today that they really concentrate on their kicking. Well, that's right. It's either drill it low and hard, hit the middle of the goals. If you're putting any height on your kick, going down to the punt road end, put it out to the right-hand side, it'll swirl around nicely for you. So it's important for both sides to convert in what is a massive day for both clubs. It's going to be very interesting, too, if that wind intensifies and swirls inside the ground. But let's talk about some of the individual players, some of the players players that could have a major influence on today's game, and none perhaps more so than the two-time Norm Smith medalist in Luke Hodge. Jason? Probably the most important player from a Hawthorne perspective. We know he's an inspirational leader with uh, the way that he performs, but uh, he's also the one that marshals the troops, and we saw Kingy show some footage a little earlier on. It, the ball had barely left his boot to kick it forward, and he was already pointing to players to get their defensive zone set up so that if the ball comes back out, they're ready and set up to rebound the ball again and to stop it going to the opposition's forward line. So he makes decisions. He's, he's almost like an assistant coach out on the ground, and if anyone's not quite paying attention or gets caught ball watching, he's the one that'll snap their mind into focus. What about Jack Gunston? Well, he's a proven big-time performer. Nearly won the Norm Smith mm. uh, when he kicked four goals uh, against uh, the Fremantle Doggers. Um, oh, sorry, I should say, see, I've just got a face full of dust as the storm <laughs> the wind picks is up. To it's really starting to blow. His kicking could be important because with a wind like this, it's going to be very, very difficult to kick goals. You're either going to need to be lucky or have a very, very good technique. Now, we, we saw he's got the glove on. Mm. Before he missed the games with the knee injury, yep. his hands weren't that great around the footy. Was it because of the, the, the injury to his hand? And how was his ball handling yeah. this week? I don't know if it affected his confidence, but I, I, I think he's got actually got his hands to a number of marks that you'd normally think he'd take. And but he actually hasn't taken yeah. them. So maybe a little bit self-protective. But I get the feeling that once you run out tonight, today, it's everything you've got, and regardless. If, if your uh, response to a little bit of dust getting in your face is an indication of how Hawthorne are going to perform early, I think yeah, the Hawks are in all yeah, sorts yeah. of strife. <laughs> but I think that, quite interestingly, I think with Gunston's injury, with that syndesmosis in the ankle, that's not something that if he starts, he's going to be fine. That can flare out. The tibia and fibula can flare apart during the game. So it be interesting to watch how that goes through, through the game. I, don't know, I only know that because I had a, a seven-week injury, that very much the same. Mate, you still, had a three-year injury. No, that was the sleep. I was just tired, waiting for the young blokes to get good so I can come back. <laughs> but no, it's a very tough industry in, injury to get through, so it'll be interesting to see how it goes for the entire game. <laughs> the Damn. NFL's Rip Van Winkle over here. <laughs> one, of the, one, well of the, time. one of the good news stories for Hawthorne is Ryan Schoenmakers. He's, uh, he's been unlucky couple of years at last he gets his chance he was a bit part player again this season what actually happened was got his opportunity and has performed one of the last two weeks i thought he might have been the unlucky one again because he's mastered no position but he's capable in many but his uh, his performance over the first two finals that he's come back into have been very very solid not world beating but solid he's a good solid citizen who does for a six foot four six foot five type player does kick the ball beautifully so what's your answer to the question posed that maybe Hawthorne have gone too big it worries me. Yeah. It worries me. The one thing I'd say about that is the rotations that they have through the midfield isn't affected whether it's Hartung or Schoenmakers out there because Hartung only comes on at three-quarter time. Yeah. The blokes who rotate through the midfield, they're still intact. So when the game's been set up to be won, those players are still there. Probably gives them a little bit of flexibility. And I also think that Roughhead's hands haven't been strong in aerial contests for a month now. He's been getting a bit of the footy on occasion, but he's a good crumbing forward and outsizing an opposition backman. He'll go body check, grab, yeah. kick a goal or kick him off the deck. I think he might even bolster their midfield today, play a bit more through the midfield and then have Schoenmakers fill a little bit of a half void he makes yeah. by being rotated through the midfield. Lynchy, let's turn our attention to the West Coast Eagles. Uh, He's the All-Australian Vice-Captain. 
And boy, what a key he is up in the forward line, Josh Kennedy. Yeah, it's been an extraordinary year for Josh Kennedy, and he'll be looking forward to this, getting out on the big stage at the MCG. I mean, we know he's kicked the 80 goals, but he's, a, he's basically he's the number one key forward in the competition, not just because of his 80 goals, but he's forward 50 pressure as well. He's number 11 in the whole competition for forward 50 tackles, and that's not something you normally attribute to uh, forwards. Jace, what was it? We didn't tackle he, he, too much. He loves tackling. In, th in fact, so does the entire West Coast forward line. They pride themselves on it. Well, I, th I think that's the, the real key thing to their forward line. Darling hasn't had a big year, but I think one of the real keys is, is Cripps. Yep. I mean, we, we saw him start early in his career with St Kilda, gone back to Western Australia, and he is a very good player at ground level. Also, has kicked 34 goals as well. So he, he can hurt you. And I'm thinking he'll be one of those players that might even push high up as one of their extra mids at the contest and then put pressure on the ball carriers of Bur Virtual and Burgoyne when they're trying to run out, but he'll hurt you the other way. So he's not just a negating def, uh, forward, he will hurt you with goals. In the style that Eddie Betts got hold of the Bulldogs yep. in their final, closest to goal, even though he was 90 to 100 metres yeah. from goal, he was the closest to goal, able to sprint back. That's his go. He, he's very good forward pressure and his ability to sprint back towards goal and get in dangerous positions on the quick ball that comes through. The big man department, there's probably none, Dermot, more important for the West Coast Eagles than Nick Natanui. He is an extraordinary, extraordinary player. Uh, Kingy and I were chatting about him earlier, and, and Kingy highlighted that when the Eagles have got the ball, which is when most teams do their damage, when your team's got it, he actually isn't all that effective. No. When the ball's in dispute, he's very good at winning it and doing something extraordinary, i.e. the centre bounce. I don't think I've ever seen... And this includes Aaron Sandlands, who plays at seven foot. Anyone reach higher at the centre bounce than Nick Natanui. And he has very, very soft hands, able to palm it one way or the other. So that immediately sends a message to the Hawthorne midfielders, hey, we don't hunt the ball, we hunt the opposition first. Because Natanui will probably jump over our Ruckman. So he gives them first dibs at the centre bounce. Thereafter, he follows up, he hunts up his own work, because the ball's still in dispute. The issue for Nick Natanui today is, for a ruckman, he doesn't have great endurance. And even though the Eagles are benefited by hot weather and, and they've had an extra week's break, he'll need a lot of support from Sinclair to run out this game. Yeah, in fact, we saw in the preliminary final that uh, he spent uh, a, n a number of minutes and fairly consistently having a spell on the bench. So yeah. they were certainly managing. Night game. And a majority yeah. of the first quarter, he played forward as well. Yeah. So, yeah he, yeah, he certainly appears to be underdone as far as his aerobic capacity or an injury. But, yeah, dynamic. Around the contest, he'll be in awesome. it. Awesome. Yeah. But he is an excitement machine. It has, however, been an emotional season for Nick Natanui. Yeah, it's been a, been a tough time for myself, but um, you know, we've got amazing support here at the footy club and uh, family and friends, so um, I'm back doing what I love doing, playing footy, so um, you know, it's made it a lot, a lot easier for me. I think the biggest thing was um, the club telling me, take as much time as you need, but you know, they even said if you don't want to come to training, you don't want to play, there's, there's no pressure to do so, but um, looking at the bigger picture, um, you know, I play footy because I want to win premierships, so um, I really wanted to play. I think I'd go mad if I sat at home not doing anything at all. So, um, yeah, being back in the routine, having, having the support of, you know, all the players and, and the coaches and, and the whole footy, footy staff, um, it's been a massive help. Every day of training, I'm, I spend most of my time thinking about, you know, my family, my mother in particular, and, um, yeah, it's going to be pretty emotional, I guess, being at the G and being in Melbourne because, um, yeah, it's something she really would have loved to be there for, but... I'm sure she's got the best seat in the house, so, um, yeah, there'll be no complaining in there. Yeah, very nicely put. She's got the best seat in the house, and he'll be certainly hoping for a big game today because, Kingy, he is one of the keys, if not the key, to the West Coast Eagles' success. Uh, he's the most unique player in the competition, Jared. I think that uh, he's almost unstoppable at the centre bounces with, with uh, as Dermot just said, what he does in there, his craft. He's the most misunderstood player in the game and I don't think he's been given too much of a chop out for many of his critics over the last couple of years, but uh, this is why he's such a superb player. Two metres and one centimetre tall, Jared. When he jumps, he jumps about one and a half metres with that knee driving into the opposition ruckman. I wouldn't want to be going up against Pignat at any stage. Three and a half metres when he gets that right hand in the air, Jared. That is, that is an unbelievable asset that the West Coast continually cash in on. Well, it gets up so high that he's then got the ability to swivel the wrist to the left or to the right, to the flipper or the flopper, but 
He also barges into his opposition, Ruckman, doesn't he? He hits hard. He actually drives his opponent back generally a metre or so and then has the clearest of taps. You can see him there against Goldstein last week being able to get that knee in the right yeah. spot first and then allow allows himself to follow up. The opposition Ruckman generally goes to ground. I love his second and third effort. So this is where he's phenomenal and he's different to most other Ruckman. He doesn't get too many stats for that, no. but there was a goal created on the back of the Nat Nui forward pressure. He's a three-effort player, and if he can get those big efforts today, then uh, they're going to create some goals. But I've got a query on the big man in general. The wind tends to neutralise their effect. It's so blustery. You don't see as many high marks, which is going to hurt Kennedy and help a Frawley. You don't see as many deaf taps because the ball is just swinging sideways in the air. So I think we're going to see a lot more throw-ups today. What he does, Jared, is impact the game. He may be a low-possession player, but it goes on the scoreboard. His score involvements and score launches are, are, are phenomenal. You can see there for the Ruckman in the competition, he's second in the competition behind Goldstein, yep. who gets a lot more ball than what Nick Nat does. So averaging four a week, which is a pretty good stat. It's a pretty uh, good number if you're coming into a game like this, a high-pressure game. Well, when you consider that uh, Nick Nat does 50% and Goldstein does 100%, and he's yep. just about there with him, uh, they are phenomenal statistics. Score rate from Cliff Clearances. Clearly, he's the yeah. best clearance player in the competition. His ability to hit it to space or follow it up himself. Mm. He's the reason, in my opinion, why the West Coast can win. If he has a bad day, and we think he's carrying some sort of issue. We saw him last week yeah. only play 70% of the game after playing 90% the week before, taking some pills halfway through the second quarter. Yeah, we know he's got a uh, long-term groin injury, and he's played with that the last couple of years. He's got a lot of criticism, but uh, should have been admired because he did get out there. I suspect it's Achilles. He brought a bit of an Achilles into the pre-season, and he's had a long, long year. They've managed him quite well. But uh, today, with only two hours of footy left, I don't think they'll be worried too much about an Achilles. Jerry's been riding him pretty hard for about four years now, Sandy, and finally, he's starting to get some recognition. <laughs> Good on you. Thanks, Jared. Thanks, Kingy. Uh, let's go inside to the MCG. The motorcade is underway. Kane Corns is the ambassador. And there we see Chris Judd and Andrew Carazzo, two greats from the Carlton Glad Football Carazzo Club. Carazzo got a ride, uh, yeah. you know, and people acknowledge him. He's been a wonderful servant for Carlton. Brad Sewell. Uh, speaking of good servants, a wonderful player for Hawthorne, Brent Riley. Horrible who, injury. Yeah, yeah, terrible. Big plugger, big man. And a legend in Tony Lockett. I think they might have the uh, the shockers on that one reinforced <laughs> with plugger in the back. I reckon they've done well just to get him down here. Yeah, well, my that's, word, that's they two, have. two public appearances in, in 12 months. That's extraordinary. That's more than the last 20 <laughs> years. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I mean, that is a great opportunity for those retired players and certainly yeah. Plugger. I mean, I think you're always a bit apprehensive to jump in the cars and go around. You don't know what sort of reception you're going to get. Might get a few sprays. Did you do it? I think yeah. he eventually, you did, go? eventually did it. But they, the response is all. great. <laughs> you were loved by all. Did I, you was actually, I wasn't in the crowd. Did you actually enjoy it, Josh? <laughs> yeah, you do. You yeah. do when you're out there. And, yeah. and I think most people accept it as a, a day of celebration. Celebration, yeah. regardless of who you barrack for. Yeah. And, and when that sort of thing happens there, they respect the contribution that everyone's made. They do. And I reckon it's great that we've got someone like Tony Lockett a part of it as well, because there's a lot of people here that you, don't get to see him. You've got a grub on you. We're yeah. outside in the there wind. There's dust you... coming in everywhere. <laughs> but he's the greatest goal kicker of all time, bar none. So it's great that the people get to identify with him a little more regularly than perhaps they have in the past. And I think it is disappointing in that regard that Adam Goods yeah. has chosen not to join us here. Well, we know the reasons season. behind that, and, and I yep. think that's fair and reasonable as well. So hopefully at the appropriate time, he'll find a great way to say goodbye to everyone. Yeah. Jay, speaking of goodbye, we're going to do that to you. But before you leave us, your tip and your Norm Smith medalist. Well, I think, it's, I think it's going to be a tight one. A lot's going to depend on how West Coast settle. Now, if they settle well, it is game on big time. I'm hoping the Hawks can get home in a tight one. Five points is the margin I'm tipping in favour of the Hawks. But I think Isaac Smith can run amok on the wide expanses of the MCG. And if he plays well, I think the Hawks are a real good chance. The number 16 flyer. Thank you, Jace, very much for everything. And, of course, Pleasure. you'll be back with Bounce on Sunday night at 7.30 for a finale. Brownie's just making his way back uh, to our <laughs> position. Just strutting his way yeah, back. Lego head. <laughs> Have a little bit, fella. Gusty winds blowing here. They're oh. expecting to be around 40 kilometres an hour. So you imagine if they had to put Brownie in the back of the ute with Plugger? Well, no, then you would have you to get have bogged a close on look. a dry day. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to go to the break with the Eagles on Josh Kennedy. He is looking for a really big day, a memorable day, here at the MCG. Yeah, it was pretty important, and uh, it wasn't just an ordinary bit of play. It was uh, quite special, and you don't want to have to rely on those types of uh, situations to, to, to get your first goal halfway through the second quarter. But for him to recognise the moment and take it, I think it's really important. Position here, coming across. Oh, big collision. 
I wasn't really thinking, especially when I took off and played on. I probably first thought was, I don't know why I'm running right now. He's going to play on Josh Kennedy. Runs to 45. The Coleman medal winner kicks the Eagles first. But, yeah, look, it paid off in the end, and we got got the goal, and, um, yeah, it was, uh, I, was just, I was just glad I kicked the goal. What a great team-lifting effort that Obviously a huge part of the moment in the game. I think Scott Thompson rolled off me at the time, so, <laughs> you know, he almost killed him. The courage he showed to go back with the flight, take the mark, and then to be able to get up and, and kick the goal, uh, I think it was our first goal of the game, so... He's just a great leader at our footy club and, you know, can't wait to run out there with him on Saturday. 367 goals and not many better than that in his career. When I was a kid, I wanted to be a fireman. Or a lion. An eagle. Or even a hawk. And then, I just wanted to play footy. And win premierships. Lots of them. What are you going to be today? What are you going to do when it's your turn to go? One last run on the dice for the very good start. To put your head in the hole. I'll tell you what you do. You go. Because that's all there is. That moment. Your moment. This is everything. It's the pain. The sacrifice. The joy. It's history. It's legacy. It's your teammates. It's family. This is who you are. Oh, Brownie, you've got us. We just want to get stripped. We're ready to go. Get out. Out. We just want to go. That is fantastic. And if you're wondering why we love the game, then just look at some of the vision from that piece of tape that we just had a look at. Uh, to the winner, of course, today, the spoiled. Weg posters have been part of this day for so many years now. They're going to be available once again today. And uh, my two models are just holding them up. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, boys. There we uh, go. $3 each. You're going for the Eagles, Lynchy. They're going to I'm be all over the Eagles, mate. They're going to be available straight after the game outside the ground. Uh, of course, it's in, in conjunction with the Herald Sun and the Good Friday appeal. So thanks once Can again. Can I get Demi to sign this? This would be a good piece of memorabilia at home, I reckon. It, oh, yeah, we might have to destroy it, though. <laughs> yeah, I knew you, you made it when you were a hand model. Yeah. Well done, boys. <laughs> <laughs> They're not real straight, but... <laughs> <laughs> uh, while they talk about uh, who's going to sign what, let's have a look at the way Hawthorne made their road to the finals. Hawthorne started the year as they finished the last, in devastating form, flogging Geelong by 62 points. Out the back, Puopolo looks to... Oh! <laughs> they seesawed between wins and losses, finally stringing two victories together in rounds 9 and 10. Hey, look at the pick-up, look at the speed from Rio! He's a genius! Cyril was scintillating, but questions were asked about the discipline of some of the club's leaders. Oh! Lewis has now gone the full Gee whiz. The Hawks went on a six-game winning streak, including a 72-point hiding of the ladder leaders in Tassie. My only lead was a clinic, wasn't it, this afternoon? With Ruffy out, goal scoring was spread across the board, and Sam Mitchell once again put himself in Brownlow contention. Hawthorne finished the season in third place at 16 and 6. Having a good time now, the Hawks. Week one of the finals was very un Hawthorne, thumped by the Eagles in an insipid performance. 
the doubters were soon silenced. The Hawks bouncing back to crush the Crows by 74 points in the semi-final. The biggest win ever for Alistair Clarkson in his 20th final. Fremantle had their chances in the preliminary, but Hawthorne's experience was enough to counter the crowd and a second trip to Perth. Gray has been a star. Quickly onto the boat, and there it is. The Hawks are into a grand final. The Hawks are now into their fourth consecutive grand final and will join the immortal teams if they can go back to back to back. Yes, they're an amazing team. Mark McClure earlier on in the day suggested that Hawthorne's experience really counted for nothing. Do you agree with that, Dermot? Not really. Not really. Uh, I don't, I, look, the West Coast Eagles get there and they got there early. It's not as if they've been a team that's come from 10th or outside the 8th, made it in the finals and won week after week to keep their dreams alive. Yeah. They know they're there nice and early. They're prepared. They've got the week's break. So they're, they're well versed with what's going on. But to know the hearts... Look, they'll be walking around the rooms at this moment. You'll be a young kid playing his first grand final and you'll be going to Sherrod Wellingham. You'll be going to some of those senior blokes going... All right, you're, you're telling me it's going to be really hot. I reckon it was really hot and, and, the, and the heat for tackling and pressure was on early three weeks ago. Uh, you're telling me it's going to be hotter than that? He doesn't know what to expect. Mm. So he doesn't know if it goes up again. So nerves will creep in on the top of that. So once you get knocked around the head a few times, yeah, you can settle down. It's the damage you I, take until that moment. I can see the leadership helping the Hawks. Definitely yeah. being a fact if the game's close late. Now, we talk about the heat. That'll help uh, West Coast potentially in the second half. But if things are tight, the more leaders out there, genuine leaders, the better for you. I, I, I remember it back in 2002, really tight game. We had a lot of leaders yeah. that carried us through that last five or ten minutes. And I believe Hawthorne, that'll, be, that'll come to the fore if it's tight, Lynchy. And the same questions were being asked about uh, uh, the Brisbane Lions in 2003. We'd lost the, the qualifying final against Collingwood. We came back in really strong fashions in the next two weeks, got to the grand final. We were seen as underdogs coming up against the Pies again. And I think we wanted to make a statement, similar to what Hawthorne did last year. We wanted to make a statement really early, and we did. We, made a, uh, we attacked the ball really hard, kicked some early goals, and the game was over very early on the back of some really strong leaders and experienced players. What interests me today is, with Schoenmakers in, and also uh, the way they've uh, dropped heart out, we actually don't quite know how they're going to play. We don't know how they're going to set up. The West Coast Eagles have got there, their first year of real improvement. We know how they got there, and they have to play the same way. So we know what they're going to throw. It's worth we know what they're going to do. You don't know what Hawthorne are going to do to them. Yeah. It is worth remembering, of course, West Coast Eagles had a shaky start to the season. They lost two key defenders, but, boy, they've covered them magnificently as we have a look at their road to the final. The season started poorly with a loss to the Dogs and a demolition in the Derby. I don't think I've ever seen a Derby as one side as it. Nick Nat Sword. He took his arms here with him and set up on top, Nick Nat Anui. But the injury toll started to mount. Gee, what more can go wrong for these Eagles, eh? Eight of nine wins had them in good stead at the break. And the Eagles tonight are second on the ladder. They weaved a new web. I've come up with what I think is part spatial defence, part man on man. And we're going to call it the Weagles web. And up forward, Kennedy took his maiden Coleman. It'll take a miracle to stop him. Fellow contenders were put to the sword as the Eagles finished strongly, finishing with 16 wins in second position. In finals week one, they proved their premiership credentials, dismantling the reigning champs and earning a week off. What a night for the Eagles. The Eagles started slowly in the preliminary, but eventually prevailed to make their first grand final since 2006. West Coast Hawthorne grand final. Can West Coast dominate Hawthorne one more time this final series? We'll soon find out. Yes, they know they can beat them. Should the web hold fears for Hawthorne, gentlemen? Well, I think it's... Uh... Only if Hawthorne can't get the control of the footy enough, you know. Their precision kicking is what can cut holes yeah. in the web, no doubt about that. If they can move, get the, just more of the ball speed. So they intercept Mark, get the ball in their back half. The ball needs to move, either by hand or by foot. Normally that's short, 
once they can get to the wings, if they can get a Smith or a Hill to move it quickly into the four line, you can get over the back of the web because we know those West Coast defenders, they play well in front of their men. It's yeah. a very aggressive, uh, I suppose, way to play football and you can get some easy goals over the back for that's the Hawks right, forwards. That's right. I see the, the critical situation, critical part of the game is the forward half for the West Coast Eagles. In particular, they're forward six or five. Right. To hold the ball in there, to put pressure on so there's yeah. not uncontested marks. Yes. Because the last 31 times Hawthorne have had 100 uncontested marks or more, they've won the game. So I think that's where they've got to put pressure on the ball carrier, force the ball long. Yeah. The web is really effective then. They're yes. really... They're really well organised in every area. They're the second most scoring team in the comp. Yep. They're led by Prittis, who just continually wins the footy. Shoe is really damaging, and he's obviously controlling those two, control that area there. And then you call, as Jared called it, the web down back. But they cash in on the hard work and pressure of that midfield that forces the opposition to go, hey, I'm under pressure, yeah. hack it forward, they throw it up with air time. And if any kicks go into the Hawthorne forward, line with airtime, hang time, they'll pick it off the Eagles. More thoughts from Kingy and Jared, and I believe, well, he's just chatting with Mr. T, so if he could uh, perhaps spare a moment. <laughs> the selfies on live TV. Meet my friend Payne out here. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, a, he's an angry man. Don't start him, Sandy. We want to talk about uh, the power forward for the West Coast Eagles. You might join in if you like. I'll Josh, join you. Josh yeah. Kennedy. What does he have to do today, Jared, to get the Eagles over the line? Well, I think he's kicked 80 goals for the year, so the expectation is he's going to kick a bag full. To me, that's not the starting point. The starting point is he's one of the great leaders of their team. He needs to set a standard for work rate, for intensity at the ball and for forward pressure. As Dermot just said, if their defence is going to work, it's going to start with the pressure in the forward half. Clearly, if he can do this in the first couple of minutes and set the standard for attack on the football, neutralise the tough and the hard ball that's going to come from the Hawks, then he's done his job. You can't go in there expecting to be best on the ground. If that happens, well, well and good. All you can do is go in there be true to your standard and deliver when it counts most. I think if he gets hold of Frawley, it can create some real problems because then they've got a, an issue with Frawley. Where do they play him? Does he go forward? Who goes to Kennedy? Because Brian Lake can't go with him. We know that. No, they've got an issue also with Kellen Sinclair. Maybe that's where uh, Brian Lake does go. But uh, Lake in the opening game, opening final, he got ran up the ground, run up the ground, and uh, he was exposed for a lack of athleticism. So it would be really handy if they could pl plant a seed of doubt in their minds. You can see his season so far prior to last week, his heat map staying inside that yeah. forward 50, very much a target player in that uh, forward 50 arc but last week got on his bike, he had 20 possessions, uh, 9 marks and I was right up as high as the wings, Jared, and I think that's where he'd be best served at the MCG. Well it's going to be interesting because uh, whoever plays on Darling I think is going to uh, go for a hell of a ride Darling is a great athlete so if it's Josh Gibson, then Gibson is their cut-in player, he's their I guess uh, intercept player, he gets taken up the ground, Lake hasn't got the athleticism to go with him, maybe in the end, it's Frawley that has to go with him. It's going to be fascinating to see who matches up on who. I think Mr T's having a stare down with you, Sandy. <laughs> <laughs> Doing it's something, of, I can tell you that. You know what is scary? It's a little bit of Travis Bickle in him, yeah. I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, nothing like having a bit of fun. And it's great to see people dressing up, whether you're a, an eagle or a hawk or whatever. It's just great to see everyone here. There's so many key players we've talked about during the day and perhaps one we should really focus on now. Uh, he's been an absolute little champ for the Hawthorne Football Club and he just continues to rack up possessions week in, week out. I speak of Sam Mitchell. What makes Sammy Mitchell so good? People see the stuff that he does out there but I guess getting drafted at the same time yeah, I, I probably saw what he was like when he first came and he was he was still short and fat like he is now, um, but the, how he's worked on certain things, he, he didn't he didn't get drafted having that step that he's got or the agility. Um, he obviously had the knack of football, he understood how it was, but seeing someone who would try and improve and make himself better every day that he that he comes to training, you, you see how he's got to the stage he is. You watch him out here day to day and the way that he trains and goes about it, um, it doesn't really surprise you. Uh, at his, his, the continual improvement that he brings for the group. Um, he's normally last off the track. He's always out there uh, working on skills and, you know, whether it be a soccer ball with, you know, and then you can relate that with his feet with a footy. Um, it just shows how good he, he's been able to um, be over the past, you know, 10, 15 years. Sammy, is life better after 30 as a footballer for you? Uh, I'm certainly enjoying it more. I'm loving um, playing the game. I love coming to training. I love coming to work. And, um, you know, trying to improve on little things and 
uh, as an individual and as a team and a group trying to fix up little things we're working on and I love the sport, I love the game so I'm certainly, I've enjoyed it more probably since turning 30. He's not the coach but does anyone know more about stoppages than Sammy Mitchell? Uh, a lot of blokes rock up to weekends and go okay I'll, I saw a couple of bits of vision and, and that's how I think they're going to go. Mitch will start watching on Tuesdays on what they do. Uh, Thursdays he'll watch a little bit more just to get 100% on what he thinks and then he'll come and talk to the rest of the guys and, and with Rats um, explain how he thinks they're going to go. You'd consider the best decision maker in the game these days. What do you do to try to improve that or train that? Pretty honest reviews I guess is where it starts. Cameron Bruce uh, as the midfield coach he's probably by my request quite critical. We don't, we don't go in and watch our tape on a Monday and look at all the things they did well. Pretty much we just look at the room for improvement column and yeah. figure out if there's a theme of something that I'm doing that's consistent, that's meaning my performance is not at its absolute premium. And I think by being quite hard on yourself and never really being too happy with the way you've gone about it. When I, go, when I put my head on the pillow, I'm always thinking about the decision I made wrong, not the ones I made right. You're watching Grand Final Day on Fox. Pre-game, brought to you by Mazda BT50. Little one to Bruce to Franklin, and he snapped a goal. Socket away by Leclerc, and again. And picked off by Shields, and Savage. This way, here's Nana Nui. And the instinct was pretty good. Oh, rough it on the line. Going smart, Rioli, perhaps even smarter. A little bit of a dance from Cyril. Now they're turning it on the hook. To Bruce, the stiff arm on Schofield along the brown. Our goal. Grips a move with the footy. He picked that pocket. He stole it out the back. Important to raise centering ball. Rioli! It's a high ball to the wing. Rough it. Oh. Off the ground by Burgoyne. Cripps sustained his run. Turns and hooks and put it through. Yes, the Hawks having to travel west twice to make it through to the grand final. Uh, they have done that. Uh, it's not going to affect them, Dermot, is it? You wouldn't think so. They're, uh, the sports meds uh, are so good now that they'll know how to prepare uh, in the right vein for this game. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think they've had the eight-day break as well, Sandy. The extra day yep. helps coming back from Perth because yep. it does hurt you, that trip. Extra day, perfect. So it should be on level terms. Let's get the final words uh, from the boys who've been uh, so good in the lab all this year, Jared Healy and David King. Gentlemen? Well, we've been over here talking about uh, Gerald, Jared's uh, web, the Eagles' web, mm. Jared. It's been a sensational year, hasn't it? And a lot of teams have struggled to come up with a, a way to defeating it. I think it's been just great innovation from Adam Simpson, born out of necessity uh, when Eric McKenzie went down. Uh, lost two key defenders, uh, which didn't help them when Brown went down as well. But uh, they have uh, really now got to face one final challenge. And that's, the, that's the stat there that we'll be watching all day today. Giveaways are where you turn the ball yep. over under no pressure. And uh, the, the, the web does that to you. It makes it hard to be precise going into an area where the opposition have more numbers than you. And their poorest results for the year, Hawthorne, have been both games against the West Coast Eagles, 30 and 27 respectively. You can't win when you turn the ball over cold. Well, like we've said it a few times, but it's a function of your system, but it's also a function of your pressure. And uh, if your pressure's not there, your system's going to break down no matter what. We saw the Adelaide Crows come up with a tactic uh, a few weeks ago, Jerry, and I want to highlight exactly what that was. It was Scotty Thompson marking the ball on the wing line there, and without hesitation, he switches the yep. ball out to the, to the fat side of the ground, the open side of the ground. They go around the web. It's sort of like they go in, in the shallow into the web and then lateral and around it, and they're able to score time and time again in this first quarter. That was uh, one of the great kicks of the season because uh, strategically it was so important, and it gives us an indication as to what Hawthorne will be looking to do with their great left-foot uh, troop of kickers. They'll be looking to spear it out to the outside players, but if that kick is kicked out there today in this really blustery wind, there's no guarantee it's going to be as accurate. So the longer the kick, the harder the accuracy. It's just why it's such a raffle for me, this result today. They would have learned some lessons from last week. The Kangaroos were fantastic in that first 40 minutes of football, and they found ways to get around it as well, Jared. Look at Higgins here. Pull the trigger sideways again. Yep. Instead of those three or four Kangaroos players being redundant on the outside and not, not usable, all of a sudden it flips the magnets and the West Coast have got six or seven players that are in poor positioning almost instantaneously. Oh, it's brilliant planning by Brad Scott last year, but I think it also gave uh, Adam Simpson something to work on. He knows that his web was a little bit too shallow to one side. He's going to have to keep it uh, a little bit 
wide itself and cover that inside kick because if he doesn't, the redundant players become very much active players. And you can see there the web almost covers from the wing line to the boundary. Yep. But the MCG, that's not the case. It doesn't have that, that width about it. The gap will probably be another 15 to 20 metres, Jared. And, and I think that'll be the big problem today. If they get their positioning wrong, they'll pay a price on the scoreboard, given the Hawks' ability to score. Yeah, it's a different environment for them. They've been here once. They played the web with great successes against Richmond. But playing it against... The Premiers of the last two years is uh, very much a different challenge. Yeah, it certainly is. The, the web's been a sensation. We've said that all year, Sandy. I think that when you when you look back at this game, this will be the reason why they win or lose. You can see here, you can see the Kangaroos taking their time. They're almost saying to the to the West Coasters, get your web set up. Yep. Get your web across. And we're going to go down the line. We're going to see if we can contest it, Mark, or if we can crumb the ball. And mm. once they did, look at his vision, Jared. He he's knew he's got there, one he? thing in mind, yep. doesn't he? He wanted to centre the ball, and you're right, that uh, delaying tactic was absolutely fantastic. It got the West Coast Eagles to commit to one side. It did, and as soon as they did that, they were out and gone. This is where Hill, Smith, Rioli on the open side, Bruce, they can create space out there. And if they're unmarked today, Jared, I can see some running goals. I can see the, the Hawks carrying the ball 50, 60, 70 metres before executing their opportunity uh, in front of goal. And if that's the case, then the win's not a factor. No, that's true. Uh, and it's one of the reasons, I think, if the Hawks are to win, the likes of uh, Cyril and Isaac Smith could well feature in the Norm Smith medal because they are going to be the great outside creators. Fascinating matchup coming, Sandy. Can't wait to see whether they can handle the web or not. No, we're really looking forward to it, King, in the West Coast Eagles making their way out onto the MCG. This is what they've strived for all year. They have the photo taken and then it's down to business. Derm, let's have a look at the Eagles lineup. The original jumpers too, Sandy. Yeah. So we've got the, uh, oh, what have they been going now? About 28, 29 years, the Eagles. Let's have a look at this team that takes to the ground for the grand final today. Starting in the back line, the two key uh, players there, Schofield and McGovern. McGovern, a wonderful intercept marker. Hearns in the back pocket. The captain there controls the outlet ball. Shepard, is, he's a midfielder, Shepard, who's gone back through necessity and been nothing short of miraculous. Yo's a, a wildcat on the wing and down the bottom there, Natanui in the ruck could be a game changer. Yeah, we see the Hawthorne uh, line up there, fantastic. Oh, James Froy, the big matchup, of course, will play on Kennedy. I would have thought Lake would take the resting ruck, but no doubts. But it's in the trenches. It's where the war will be won. It'll be Hodge and Lewis that'll set the tone with their physicality and get the ball out to the runners of Hill and Smith. And down forward, Gunston's the one constant. He'll play there all day, of course. Ruffy will get up through the middle. And Sean Makers, going to be a key one. Can he take a big clunker? Just needs maybe a couple goals to contribute, but have a look at this great side on the cusp of history, three in a row. And isn't this yeah. a great moment, bursting through the banner into another grand final, and you just want to get into it, and then some photographer says, come and sit down on the bench, <laughs> and we'll take a photo, which uh, certainly does bring some lighter moments as well, but it is a great opportunity for this fantastic football club, already 12 premierships uh, on their belt, and uh, they're looking for another one. They're going to make it 13, Lynchy. I, yeah, I'm going West Coast Eagles. You're going West Coast. Not going to surprise me at all. I'm going West Coast. Brownie. Hawthorne by about 20. Dan? Yeah, I'm, I'm Hawthorne 20 to 25. I just have to say, that running out in the ground, Sandy, apart from seeing your kids born, it's the best moment in your life. You yeah. run onto the ground, and just by the fact that you're entering an arena, 100,000 people within yeah. 100 metres in any direction all scream, it is the moment of your life. And That's I tell great. you what, I think from a spectator's viewpoint, the best moment is the last few seconds of the national anthem as that roar builds oh, yeah. and you've got the opening bounce. Good luck to the umpires. We hope the opening bounce is an absolute beauty. Look, enjoy the game by all means, but come to back to us here on Fox Footy at half time and also post-game for a complete look at the 2015 AFL Grand Final.